this week in the field, thinking in four dimensions while setting up your composition. Hi everyone, I'm Scott Davenport and welcome to In The Field. Thanks for joining me today. A few weeks ago, I asked you about your number one challenge with the field side of landscape photography. You're out with the camera, what's your biggest challenge? And composition was a recurring theme. And I'm gonna do a deeper video on that, probably as a vlog. Uh, watch for that over the next few weeks. But today's video is one compositional tip, and I use this a lot with my seascape work. As I've gotten better with composing and photographing seascapes, I realized that I am tending to think in four dimensions, you know, the fourth dimension being time, because the ocean's a moving thing. And I'll set up my composition waiting for the ocean to fill in the gaps that otherwise are there. So when I'm initially composing the scene, it doesn't look particularly compelling until the ocean fills in the spaces. And I'm you know, projecting that, I'm predicting when that's going to happen. And I was reminded of this on a shootout at Swami's Beach in Encinitas, California. So let me show you some footage from that and then we'll come back and talk a little more. All right, welcome to Swami's. I'm gonna head down to the shoreline here in a minute, but just give you a sweep of what's going on here. It's gonna get bright here for a second, but there are some nice rocks up to the north. I'm gonna go head up there, use that to anchor my shot. Put the sun a little bit behind me, so color-wise, looking more like this. Although I gotta say, I'm also thinking about grabbing some black and white stuff. Let's get on the move. I really like the sweep of the land behind me. There's a nice curve, healthy amount of beach. Rocks are kind of interesting. Uh, my challenge is getting uh, an angle that's a little bit higher on them to get a little separation so I have some depth in the scene. But I need to spend a bit of time kind of dancing around the, the rock you see over my shoulder here, figure out the, the, best, the best composition that I can make today. All right, so I got my settings dialed in. F11, first couple of rocks are in focus. There's uh, not too much in terms of uh, atmosphere in the sky, so I actually can get some pretty good depths. So I may go to 16. And the challenge I'm having now is uh, I want to do a really long exposure, but I'm in soft sand. As soon as those waves come up, the tripod sinks a little bit, even with the spikes. So uh, I may have to retreat to higher ground to get uh, a, a longer exposure. The problem is there's no higher ground here. So uh, we're just gonna have to see how this goes. I moved up to some slightly drier ground and I'm just gonna focus on capturing the sweep and the curve of this beach and land. I was trying to frame up the, the bit of uh, tide pools and reef that I'm standing on and including that in the frame. But quite honestly, it was just becoming distracting and all the casting, uh, the shadows that are being cast by it are just not that pleasing. So uh, I am struggling a little bit with my own shadow and the shadow of the rocks, but keeping that, you can see it in the lower left corner, keeping it just out of that corner there. And I am gonna throw on uh, a whole ton of filters. I'm gonna smooth this all out. This is gonna be very nice for my black and white project. Simple curved line leading to the scene, soft water. I can't ask for more. I started with a 14 stop setup of filters. It gave me a five minute exposure and it just was way too long. It, it lost the curve of the land here. So I'm dropping down just to a 10, giving me about, about 25 seconds to smooth that out and see what that looks like. Well, that turned out to be way better than I could have anticipated. There's still a pink glow in the sky now, but this looks horrible. I look like I'm on the, I look like I'm on Mars. Of the several compositions I worked that evening, the one that I was working on the most you saw first. Now that foreground rock, some space, a mid-ground rock, and then the sweep of land as background and just had to wait for a right set of waves to stack up enough to fill in those spaces. Uh, I can't admit this is the strongest photo I've ever taken, but it does illustrate the point of thinking in four dimensions and thinking about how the ocean's gonna fill in the gaps that are otherwise in the composition. Because without the ocean in between the rocks and giving some interest there, it was pretty boring looking. Uh, and so it got improved as the ocean filled in the spaces. So that's the tip of the week, really thinking in four dimensions. And anytime you've got moving elements in a scene, it could be clouds, it could be the way that trees sway, it really, you know, a river that you know, rushing around a certain rock, whatever it might be, you got moving elements and predicting how they're going to look after a certain amount of time or when you've, when you've composed all of the fixed elements in the scene knowing and waiting for that right moment when your moving elements come into play. And, and you know, maybe it's you know, the clouds are mirroring some type of shape that you have on the, the ground. So you get you know, an above and below 
kind of symmetry in your shot with just shapes or you know maybe it's colors and whatever it might be but thinking in four dimensions there's one other thing i want to show you too from this shoot and i've talked about tripod spikes on a variety of other videos and even with spikes how the tripod can shift in the sand well i grabbed a little clip of my very lightweight you know secondary tripod i use just to film some of the things while i'm out there and just placed it in the sand and let the ocean hit it while I was recording with a little camera. And you can see here how much there is a shift in the scene just from what otherwise feels like a pretty gentle wave. To our tripods, it's kind of a big deal. So um, I, I thought it was an interesting little thing to tack on to this particular video because uh, I had the forethought, maybe I thought in four dimensions, to actually capture this particular thing here. So tripod spikes are great. They'll buy you some additional time, but they're not going to be the end-all be-all of, uh, of, of preventing motion in a very long exposure. You know, it, it gets you two, three, four seconds pretty easily. After that, if you've gotten several waves hitting you, I don't care how, it was short of having two foot deep spikes, you're gonna have some shift in, in your base, you know, how, to, how, how stable your tripod is. It's the ground that's unstable. That's going to do it for this week's In the Field. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, please let me know somehow. Comments on the video below. Questions are great. Social share is always appreciated. And if you want to send me a private question, don't want to make it public, contact me through my website. And I usually turn answers around in a day or two. And I might use your question to feed the idea engine behind this show. So I cannot tell you how much I appreciate your questions. Well, until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Happy shooting. <laughs>